Right, uh, in this video I'm just going to be uh, showing me uh, installing the uh, the remainder of the uh, Amiga Workbench um, 3.1 operating system. I just thought that whilst I was installing this operating system after having a password problem on the Amiga, so I just show like the installation of the uh, Amiga OS. It's actually quite interesting um, when you think about it, but and it's not like that easy because the Amiga is sort of it's a computer, sort of a computer in its own right, and uh, as you can imagine, it, it sort of does sometimes has problems with the Amiga workbench where the operating system becomes somewhat unusable or a bit corrupted through installing certain software programs for the Amiga Workbench. Uh, as you can see we're on disk 3 it's saying to uh, insert the Amiga local disk version 3.1 into any floppy drive and that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm using a small CRT television, I mean I could use my normal flat panel TV but uh, seeing as I have this small TV I'm going to use that and just uh, sort of hope for that. So we need the local one which I don't know if we've got its hand. But I do believe that the actual operating system is only about five floppy disks big, although I may have misplaced one of them, so it could be slightly bigger than that. You can see it has the Amiga local disc. It's an Amiga Forever disc. It says Amiga Forever Classic Support Workbench 3.1 Local. It's manufactured by Clovanto. Let me just put that in here. Let me just slot that in. And we can already install. One thing to note is that the Amiga is quite clever with floppy disks, it can actually um, sort of recognise when a uh, floppy disk has been inserted and uh, that is actually quite interesting in that sense. Um, Some soup cooking. So I ain't anything for dinner yet. Um, anyway, and uh, yeah, and it's not too much really. Now it's interesting that with this little TV because it does have a 12 volts input on it, but it also has two modes. Um, it has a uh, monitor mode and it has a TV mode. I've got it set to monitor mode and I'm using a uh, yellow composite cable down the back which goes to the yellow composite on the back of the TV and uh, I'm using a left audio cable which is the left audio input on the TV. The TV is only mono however it still sounds pretty good. And it's still it's pretty loud. Uh, in order to get this TV on, um, there's a switch on the back that you have to flick onto the on position. Then you would press this DC power button, and then you would press this power button, and then it switches on. In order to get any signal on this, you need to use the composite input on the back and uh, uh, yeah there is no analog TV signal so you're sort of a bit screwed you can't really get television on that unless you have like a digital set top box that will work with it this is the last disc, this is the Amiga Workbench storage disc, I believe that, that this is the last one. 
I'm not one of them. Oh, wait. Ah, right. So there is a FOMS disc missing. So I was right, there is something missing. Um, I'm just going to look for it. Yeah, so that is the one that's missing. So there is the uh, FOMS disc, which I've managed to got mixed in with all the other floppy disks that I have. Yeah. Um, there is a 4 gigabyte CF card in here, there's an Amiga ACA1221 Motorola 68000 of some kind, accelerator, it gives us about 8 megabytes of RAM on that card, that's another 2 built in, so we're talking about 10 megabytes of memory. And believe it or not, some games actually work really well, but I've really tried to get the internet to work on this machine, and I think I'm going to leave the internet out of the picture because it just seems like it's going to be too hard to set up. And the iBrowse web browser apparently is not available for purchase. Apparently it can update, so it's a bit... I don't know what to think it is. Even though I can even get the uh, wireless card to work, I can't actually get any real connectivity to the internet or anything. I ain't got a web browser. Nor have I got the uh, IPv4 stack, which just really makes things a bit annoying more than anything. As you can see, we're doing, there is a little bit of banding on the screen, but to be fairly honest with you, it's not too bad. And, yeah, 75% done, I think. The one thing that I can't help say is, you are probably going to see the writing on this screen better than I can see it on the TV somewhat. Uh, this screen is probably, I don't know how big, probably about 10 inch at the most, probably less. Just bear in mind that when you install Amiga operating systems, you will be doing it from floppy disk more than likely with the old versions. And you will be switching between one floppy disk and another in order to install specific parts, it's just the way that it's done. I imagine though if you're ever an updated version it'll be on a CD or something different. But that is not the case at the moment. Yeah, I'm not using a tripod. I really, really don't want to use a tripod. I mean I think I think that would be a bit of a waste of time. So I mean if the truth had to be known, I generally don't use a tripod, and as for planning... Planning is not exactly something that... There is a lot of that takes place in this room. Um, sometimes I plan ahead for my next video. For the Reactor West ones I often do, but with it... This one, this was more of it like a spur of the moment video. Just more of covering something that I'm doing now as opposed to anything else. I mean, the one good thing with this screen is, yeah, is uh, it is a bit clearer than the LCD and the LCD will accept it with a HDMI to a composite converter and it has been done but you know if you've got one of these CRT screens ideally a small one you'll probably find that uh, Yeah, you will probably find that um, 
But if it works, you know, things like old games, consoles, old computers like this, Atari's, Mega Drive, NAS, SNAS, GameCube, as late as, you know, will. Yeah, they will work off of these. Uh, screen just fine. The font size might suffer a bit, but there you go. I mean, can't have it both ways. I mean, as you can see, that's a red LED flickering away. Quite nice, really, but the drawback is that the hard disk drive LED doesn't like. However, this power supply is one of them ones that's made in India and just doesn't. Uh, really give enough power to begin with anyway. I mean, it's asked me if this stupid non-existent AMI TCP disk, and I don't know how to get rid of it. And annoyingly, it's somewhat messed up the install, and I, I was reinstalling the workbench thinking, oh yeah, that'll obliterate that. But clearly not. The X folder I can't seem to even get into, it won't allow me to get into it, I don't know if there's a specific reason, but C can be accessed. Yeah, it's just a bit meh. It's a bit cryptic. Oh, but this does do, um, this does play games and it does have a, uh, WHD load think on it. Which sort of makes life somewhat easier. But yeah. Mm. As you can see. Where is it? That, that red LED is clearly flickering away. But it was. But yeah, it takes absolutely forever to get into this folder. So, you know, it is very easy to uh, just make a complete fuck up of the drive, I believe. I could possibly format straight over the workbench volume, but I'm not 100% certain if I can do that. I don't know if it's that intelligent. As you can see, you can do weird things with the, the display, and it is in full colour. All that consoles of days gone by. Um, you know, yeah, you are given some choice in that. I mean, I think I'm going to have to reinstall this operating system for a second time. Simply because it's not having it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to boot back into the thing, cancel off the army TCP crap, try to format the workbench volume and then try to uh, reinstall from there on out. Do a few are done and I don't know what to do about it. Is it managed to set a uh, Some stupid fucking password that. And the worst thing is, that there was never any password when I bought that CF card. It was already pre configured and set up. Sixty-one percent. So it's WB, but well, I don't think it's going to let us do it.
almost forgot one. They won't even... DH2, what the hell's that? Now, I'm not even sure which drive is which. I don't want to accidentally format the game so far. Six percent four. So it's gonna have thirty nine. At least that works. I don't think that will do anything. See, it's still not doing anything. Reset the way it doesn't do it. So, I mean, this is hard, is probably one work. You can see it's not brilliant. This screen so we ain't gonna fuck close to uh I mean I don't know how to do it, so I'm just never had to format the system though. Fifty seven plus thirty six eighty seven. Nice. Nice. Say it's dear. So, yes, it is. Yeah. We're going to just completely obliterate the drive and hope it will actually allow us to do it. It's, it's, it's clearly doing something. It does look like that, that is the volume. I mean, I chose the smallest one because it does seem like the, the workbench volume is the smallest. Now, there is some DOS compatible with the same name, and it's called Cross DOS. Oddly enough, but it's not exactly fully Microsoft DOS compatible. So uh, yeah, it's worth mentioning that. I also have a uh, compact flash adapter. If I could ever get it into focus. As you can see, compact flash. This one is an integral compact flash card. It holds a total of 512 megabytes. It's a PC MCIA. Adapter, compact flash card types. Who else does it need? So, um, as you can see, just goes in there, and you slot it in, and just like a floppy disk, it will automatically appear on the uh, Screen and you can, uh, well, yeah, you can um, use just like all the cards, see that compact flash card. So, 
If you remember, it was quite a long time that when I did some videos on the Amiga. One of them was pretty unpopular. Which didn't exactly surprise me. Um, I know you can't please them all, so there you go. And uh, yeah. But the um, layout of the keyboard is a bit different. The slash key isn't normally where it, you know, it's been moving on here. And even on the computer's keyboard, they've moved it down, and it's not never usually there. As you can see, that key is like on the Amiga, it's all the way. That's the backspace, uh, backspace key for some reason. I think Workbench itself will be pretty much less inaccessible. So, yeah, now it's like in theory. If we press Control Amiga and Amiga, it won't boot because it, the, the drive is blanked out. As you can see, there you go. That's what we wanted. We wanted to blank it off. This is the one thing and I really was annoyed was the fact that everything is pre installed on this card. It, it's good if you want the games, but it's not so good if you mess up the operating system. I've only formatted the partition for the Amiga OS itself. I haven't formatted the uh, games partitions that I advise that if anyone was to get in a similar sort of this situation so just do a similar thing otherwise you will lose all the games as well and they're not exactly cheap them cards are either. they're usually 30 40 50 quid depending on what card you want and whether you want the cable with it or not and you do sort of need to make sure that app but straight off the bat, that you have got the correct Amiga, because otherwise, the, uh, um, as you can see, you just do it even the on screen menu or on screen display for it, so that will hold this series. Yeah, otherwise, if you don't have the right Amiga, you're not gonna really be able to use an hard drive of it and you'll find that you are consigned to either a CF card, a floppy emulator or floppy disks. And I know that people who want to keep the Amiga completely original are probably going to use the uh, floppy disks and probably the CF, uh, the CF card, sorry. Right, I mean I don't know if this is going to be any faster but still let's try again. Do that, do that, do that, and then uh, just say uh, put drivers on for apps and printers. So let's uh, proceed, proceed. I do have a joystick just there as well. I did buy a controller, I just don't know how I've put the damn thing. And always get it. Put this next disc in, it's saying, please insert the Amiga Workbench system disc version 3.1 in any floppy drive. You can actually print off of this Amiga, but it's more of a case of finding a compatible printer than it is anything. I mean, the Epson LQ300 Plus that I have isn't exactly even in the list of support of printers. It must have been slightly newer than the Amiga when it was released, and therefore it never got the driver for it. As you can see, we're on 12%. You know, it says press escapes to abort, but really we can't do that, we're just going to get straight on that. There's several folders that it would seem that the Amiga has it as a programs folder, as a fonts folder, as a C folder, as an S folder, uh, as a press folder. There is something about commodities on the Amiga. Um, You know, 
it has, a lot of it is well thought out. It, there is the preferences area in the operating system itself. You know, there is a lot. that uh, the operating system does give you. It's a lot of right clicking as opposed to left clicking. You're going to be pretty much the last stuff if you ain't got a mouse. So if you can get older than Amiga compatible mouse like that one, that one I believe is the tank mouse, then that's probably your best bet. The equipment for the Amiga isn't exactly the cheapest thing. When we were talking, the accelerator that I got was like roughly about 70 quid. And uh, a lot of the higher speeds and higher memory allocations are locked out as well at that. So, uh, yeah. Things you have to like. I think it's like Facebook page or something like that, but anyway, as you can see, but you do get a base memory of 8 megabytes, so I think it's like 20 something megahertz or something on them lines. Can't exactly I don't remember off the top of it because it was the other year when I installed it. But it definitely makes the uh, system a lot more capable and a lot more compatible than if you were to have to uh, run it off of its base memory uh, at its base speed which is basically what a lot of people when the Amiga initially came out probably would have done the base speed of these Amigas is about 7 megahertz as high as 14, I think, is. You know, I think 14 megahertz is like the fastest one they ever brought out. I mean, uh, I do believe that it is. But it's about 40 megahertz out of the box. I seem to have ended up with manual for a different one. But as you can see, yeah. Motorola 6AEC020 at 14 megahertz. Memory 2 megabytes. Operating system Amiga OS 3.0 3.1. There you go. You didn't even have to click on the link. So this has up like, yeah, that... Arguably 25 years of age on its back. Straight out of the box anyway. They're only going to get older these. Um, they're not going to get any younger. And something like a uh, compact flash card will perform considerably faster than the uh, RD hard drive that you would have had to use, and generally it would make any amount of floppy disks seem so. One of my warnings about buying an Amiga 500 is that you can't install an hard drive and everything will be loaded off of a floppy disk literally every time um, you want to do something with it. And even if there's an install option with that program, if you're using an Amiga 500, you will not be able to install it because there's nowhere to install it to. I suppose you might get away with putting it on a CF card, but... That's not exactly very convenient when... 
you want instant access to the game basically you know if you want that sort of access to the games where you just get to them within the space of a few clicks then you probably want to uh, have them loaded onto the uh, hard drive if not a uh, compact flash card for the fastest possible accessibility really. And this is the last disc, this is storage. So yeah, you've not only got to see me install the operating system once, you've got to see it being installed twice. As well as the drive being formatted in order to make things a lot easier. As you can see, you can probably just make out at the top. There is just the top bit of the floppy drive icon, that's the disc that I've just inserted. One thing that I don't think Windows actually does that Amiga does do is it tries um, to uh, detect the presence of a uh, floppy disk and uh, it generally does show it on the desktop of the Amiga workbench. Reinsert the install disk, and I do believe that that is basically the install all being done with that. And I've had Outrun working on this. There is a number of other games that I'm going to try to get working. Uh, the one thing that really has me shocked is that even though the Amiga has sound built into it, and you can just see the CF light flickering there. It really does actually sound really good for its age. It's very... High quality sound compared to a... Some things. And just to prove that we're actually loading off of the uh, CF card, we'll just switch this on and we'll wait for it to boot up. I think the uh, actual startup will be a lot faster because there's less. Yeah, it's less busy now. But what I do want to do is I do want to. Uh, rename that drive to WB which is what it was called before and actually make it look like an exact same because I do want it I don't want people to know oh that's the system drive you know don't don't touch it because the moment you do touch it you're gonna trash it it's like Windows you wouldn't delete the Windows folder if you knew that it was gonna kill the whole operating system so uh, why would you do it there? So as you can see, that is that. As far as I'm aware, the other two partitions are still intact. That one's there. This one is there. The right click menu has gone. I mean, we've lost that. Don't we? But as you can see, yeah. Should be alright now. Okay, that was a short video on installing Amiga Workbench 3.1 onto an Amiga 1200 from 1992. This is more of a games machine for me than it is all else. You know, if I got desperate, I could type something up and print it out on this using the generic printer driver with the Epson dot matrix printer. But, well, you know, somehow, I can't see myself doing that. Anyway, um, I hope you found this interesting, and uh, please like, 
comment and subscribe. Uh, I don't know what the next video is going to be about, but uh, I, I am thinking about some reactive ass stuff that needs to be done, so uh, yeah, if anything, some of them videos may come within the next few weeks. But at the moment I'm just focusing on some music projects and that, so it could be a little short period until I actually put any more computer related stuff up onto the uh, YouTube channel. Okay, thanks for watching.